And welcome back to ABC and ESPN's March Madness on the Hill. I'm Rick Klein from ABC News, joined as always by Andy Katz from ESPN. And Andy, we're having a good time now with uh, <laughs> Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota, who will be positioned Rick. near your team right here, a 5-12. <laughs> so I assume you have Middle, Middle Tennessee State as, a, uh, as an upset special, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to go after them. They are no <laughs> match for the Gophers. Uh, they'll, they're going to fall to the Golden Gophers. The rodents will win. This is my prediction. <laughs> so right. Minnesota's had quite a turnaround. I mean, a mm -hmm. year ago, uh, clearly a poor season for Rich Pitino. There was questions about whether or not he could turn it around. Yeah. How do you assess the turnaround that the Gophers have had in a year? Well, it was quite extraordinary because the president of the University of Minnesota was getting enormous pressure to can Coach Patino, and he stood up and said, no way. The coach stood up after Villanova won. He said, look, anything's possible. We're going to turn this around. I got a lot of grief for saying that, and look where they are now. They completely turned around their record, um, and are, we're so excited they're in the NCAA. It doesn't happen to us often, and in fact, you have to go back to uh, 97 before we were in the final four itself. So there's been a lot of turmoil to you. I mean, you know, with the football program and everything happened, what do you think it means to have the basketball program do something positive? Because there had been a lot of negative issues over the last year with the AD resigning and, and everything that happened off the court with the football team. Right, it hasn't been easy for uh, the University of Minnesota sports, um, but this is just like our golden go for a moment uh, because this is a scrappy team as you know their one senior uh, is out now and so it is all younger guys who have come up and are fighting hard and when you watch the team when they played both Michigans one they won one they narrowly lost even when they were losing they seemed happy just happy to be there um, and I think that kind of optimism and just joy of the sport is what like, we like to see in Minnesota so what is March Madness like in the United States Senate are you able to watch any of the games are you guys talking oh, yeah. about it on the floor oh the cloak rooms? often they're on in the cloak rooms if we have votes and then when you're in the Senate you know in that somber arena you can hear in the cloak rooms people cheering and <laughs> booing and everything else because we always have the game on in the cloakroom while we're voting. So those may not know this, that uh, you've got a rich history in sports in your family. Tell us about your, your father's uh, you know, sports writing career. Well, first of all, my dad was a high school basketball player, which is rather amusing because he's not very tall. Uh, but he <laughs> did that. He got yeah. to play in the Minnesota high school tournament, and he went on from there uh, to be a sports writer. And he covered the Vikings and the Twins in their early days. Um, when they were literally just an expansion team. The Vikings went on from there, uh, covered the last time the Gophers were in the Final Four. Uh, an incredibly prolific writer, one of his most famous books, uh, in addition to a biography of Fran Tarkenton, was a uh, book he wrote called Will the Vikings Ever Win the Super Bowl? Uh, it was written decades and decades ago and sadly is still relevant today. It's good for sales, I guess, if it doesn't become, <laughs> totally. doesn't become outdated. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, about the women's game. We've seen the, the, the NCAA tournament on the women's side become very, very popular. Your state has a, a tremendously popular WNBA team as well. What have you seen in the, the last couple of years, decades, that uh, in terms of the growth, how important has that been? Uh, well, that's been a very exciting thing, the growth of women's sports. And what comes with it, of course, is the fans. And as you see more women in the Senate, we're now up to 21 women senators, an all-time high. Um, you see more women in power in the boardrooms and circula circling the earth. Uh, <laughs> you see more women in professional sports as well as college sports. So uh, what we've seen with the links uh, is just a lot of excitement uh, from the Olympics to um, our own uh, wins that we've seen in Minnesota. And uh, the parades are endless. People are turning out in droves every time they win. Um, and maybe we quite haven't seen the victories in some of our male teams. Um, and that has put even more focus on our women's team. So we're great to have them. But just nationally, UConn women's team, obviously mm -hmm. the prohibitive favorite again, winning over 100 games in a row. What do you think they've done for women's basketball and women's athletics to really put right. together a remarkable streak. Well, what it does is it inspires young girls. You know, you've got a eight-year-old watching at home and thinks, maybe I can do that. And, you know, maybe they don't end up uh, 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 on a winning team or even playing in college, um, but it makes them turn out. It makes them turn out for sports and thinks that they can do it. When I was growing up, actually, uh, most of the girls um, went on the cheerleading squad or was on dance line. My best friends did that. I couldn't do the splits, so. <laughs> can do it. Um, and there were a few brave, courageous girls that were on those teams, uh, but no one was much paying attention to them. 
what a shift. And it is coinciding with the shift of women in power in our country. And I don't think it's a surprise uh, because you learn team spirit, you learn competitiveness, you learn how to lose or win a game and still go to face your opponents um, with a smile and a shake at the end of the game. Um, that's about that's a good lesson for life and I think you're gonna see more and more women that are in sports than excel in other areas. So to that point, I'm wondering on the Senate floor, can you do that? Can you argue and debate and sometimes say hateful things and yet have a handshake after? Uh, we certainly can. Now there are a lot of people that kind of want to go back to their own end zones, you know. Um, but in fact, there's a lot of us that hang out at the 50 yard line um, and at mid court. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and that's because we think it's better for the country and that courage is no longer just standing by yourself um, giving a speech, just like it's not courage in sports if you're just a hot dog. Uh, courage is whether or not you're willing next to, st to stand next to someone that you don't always agree with for the betterment of this country. And just like the Gophers are a team that works together well, our country works together well uh, when people don't see the divides, but they see what unifies them. And have you filled out a bracket yourself? Do you do that? Uh, no, I haven't, because my bracket would just have one team. Well, that's on what it. I was going to ask. Because uh, I don't want to like against. bet against. No, I <laughs> would just write never in 63 pick times. against. No, no, so no, no. You, no. you may have Minnesota like beating North Carolina, Carolina then. Oh, completely. All the okay. way. That would be it. Just like all the way. Pencilman right here. That's all the way. All the way. All right, Senator Amy Klobuchar from Minnesota. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Great Appreciate to be it. On. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back throughout the day with more here from Capitol Hill. Uh, you can follow Andy at ESPN mm -hmm. Andy Katz. I'm at Rick Klein. Listen to our podcast, Capital Gains, and we'll be back for March Madness on the Hill in a little bit.